How are things with you and you, not Dane, your real family? Well, I don't know. I haven't talked to them. And if I don't call them, they don't call. Tell me this, why don't you call Warren? For what? You call family because you love them. You're always supposed to keep a line of communication with family. And I'm asking you, why don't you keep one? Because 50% of the time, they're not going to answer because they're busy. Yeah. yeah, other half the time, if it's my real mother, we're going to argue. So what's the point? Greetings. I'm G. Craig Lewis of EX Ministries. And we're here with episode four, four. of the exposition. And uh, today we're going to be talking about getting over it. I did a video a while back called Letting Go. And uh, many of you that follow the ministry have seen it. Very powerful video to help people get past past hurts and different things that are holding them back. Um, it's a real good video. And uh, you can get that at exministries.com. But um, today we're going to be kind of covering some of these things. Also, I do a daily word. And I, I did a daily word about uh, forgiveness. You can subscribe to that as well at EX Ministries. Dot com. I'm here with Jay Bryan and Carmina Barnett. Y'all doing all right? All right, Pastor. Good. All right. Well, we're talking about getting over it. It's time to get past it. Carmina? So, getting over it. We're going to talk about forgiveness. Mm -hmm. So, why is it so hard for us as Christians to forgive? Now, if we're supposed to be like Christ, Christian, Christ, uh huh, doesn't forgiveness reflect Him? So, why is that so hard for us? Um, you know, that's a great question. And let me add one to you, though, right? Okay. Um, are we truly saved if we have not forgiven? Ooh. That's the question. That's, that's something to think about Ooh. as well. So forgiveness is a prerequisite of being forgiven according to the Bible. We look at Mark eleven twenty six. 26. It states, but if, if ye do not forgive, neither will your Father which is in heaven forgive your trespasses. So we already know we're born into sin. And because of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we've been forgiven of those sins. Um, but if we look at the definition of forgive, there's also a debt associated with that. So you can forgive a debt. Our debt was the sin. Jesus paid that price. So it, the, the Bible speaks directly to that. We go to God. We want to be forgiven for all of the things that we did wrong, um, all of our mishaps and missteps. Um, but for, so for us not to give someone that same grace or that same opportunity uh, really speaks to whether or not we're truly saved. So we expect God to forgive us, but we're not trying to forgive other people? Right. Okay. Yeah, and that's impossible, according to the Bible. Uh, and it's hard for many to forgive because they just don't really know how bad they need forgiveness. It's mm -hmm. so funny how people can hold grudges or, you know, have an issue with something someone did to them, and they're doing stuff. Right. And, you know, mm -hmm. they try to rank it, and they do whatever. Well, what I'm doing ain't as bad as what was done to me or whatever, but you're still doing stuff that right. God is seeing. So we all need forgiveness. We've all um, sinned and fallen short of God's glory. So when we stand before him, even if we're just praying, if we stand before him to pray, uh, the Bible tells us that we have to forgive in order to be forgiven. That's Mark 11 and 25. And when you stand praying, forgive if you have ought against any. That your father also, which is in heaven, may forgive you your trespasses. So there's no way we can be proud enough to think that what someone did to us is worse than what we've done and then try to get before God. God wants us to realize, hey, you forgive them because you need me to forgive you. Amen. So is it possible to hold on to hurt and pain of your past? To hold on to all of that, which is what's probably causing a lot of the unforgiveness. Is it possible to hold on to that without it affecting the future? Did you just breathe? I'm just asking oh. a question. <laughs> <laughs> she finished? Hey. I, is, it, is it impossible to oh, do okay. that? <laughs> she was princess. So, yeah, I don't know. Um, so I, I mean, I think the question is, you know, why are you trying to move on without actually moving on? You know, and, that, and that's, a, that's a common thing, I think, in the human experience, especially for those of us who don't have um, the right path that we're being directed down or, or led by. That's why it's good to have elders or people with wisdom in your life so they can help you through these processes, right? So if, if we haven't really moved forward, then how can we truly move forward? If I'm still holding on to something and I'm going about like everything is okay, but I'm triggered, you know what I mean? And we're mm -hmm. gonna deal with more into that as we, as we move along further into the show, but I'm, I'm triggered by things because of that unforgiveness that I'm harboring. So a lot of times we hear this reference in relationships. 
Um, and unfortunately, it's geared more towards the, the um, what God would create as the weaker vessel will be the woman. If she experiences a man and, and all of his flaws and, and failures too early, too soon, too often, then she's damaged or, or has that experience that she carries to a guy that's really God-fearing, that's really trying to be her priest, provider, and protector. Mm -hmm. And now she, she can't move on from that past experience. So mm -hmm. I think that's the main thing. We, we, we really truly have to focus on what we're forgiving for, and, and then give it forgiveness mm -hmm. so that we can be forgiven continually as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And moving on when it comes to our future, I always look at our lives as building a building. That's basically what we're doing. Mm -hmm. And foundation. the building is only going to be as solid as the foundation. Right. And so if we're building a building, but there's a crack in the foundation or the foundation is, is faulty or it has an issue, mm -hmm. no matter how beautiful the building is, no matter what we try to put on it, it's going to eventually crumble and fall down because the foundation of a building is the most important part. That, right. that, that decides how long the building is going to last. Right. And so if we're dealing with unforgiveness, that's why, you know, here at ABC, when you come, <clears throat> when I meet with people, especially when I do premarital counseling, whatever it is, I tell them, hey, the first thing we all have to do is get over our past. Mm -hmm. And I don't mean skip over our past. I mean, really deal with what happened to us. Like what we went through, really let God heal it so that our foundation can be solid. And then whatever we put on it from there, mm -hmm. we know it's going to have longevity uh, because uh, it's going to be built on a solid foundation. Luke 6 and 48 says it like this when it's talking about um, uh, God is saying, whoever hears my word or Christ is saying, whoever hears my word and the man that hears it and does it, right. he is like this. Uh, 6 and 48 says he is like a man which builds a house and diggeth a deep foundation. And I tell people all the time, whenever you see them building a skyscraper, mm -hmm. the foundation isn't on the ground. They dig almost halfway down the size of the skyscraper in the, the ground. ground. Right. Yeah. And uh, that's what this is like in it too, because wind and way, I mean, well, wind mostly or hurricanes, if you're on the coast or whatever, are going to try to you know, not try, but could knock this building down or or mess with its foundation. There's only one leaning tower of Pisa. Right. I mean, <laughs> ain't, ain't nobody trying to build that again. Right. So, uh, <laughs> but it's saying it's like a man who builds a house and diggeth deep and laid the foundation on a rock. And when the flood arose, the stream beat vehemently upon that house and could not shake it, for it was founded on a rock or a solid foundation. And that's what we have to do. We got to clean our past up, make sure there are no cracks in the foundation, make sure it's not built on sand, make sure it's not built on mud and sludge, mm -hmm. but it's built up on the rock, which is Christ Jesus. Right. And that mm -hmm. same rule has to apply, not even just in our own personal lives, but in relationships, in building ministries, yeah. in building organizations. Anything you build needs to be a foundation because it's only going to be as strong as the foundation. That's why a lot of churches are in trouble because they built them on height, feeling, money, whatever mm -hmm. the case. And it really needs to be God's solid rock, which I consider his will. Because, you know, if it's Christ's will for you to do it, then if you follow him, he's going to solidify the foundation. Right. Absolutely. Here's something that I ran into as I was preparing for this. And in talking with people about forgiveness, for some reason, now it's like when you say you got to forgive somebody, it's seen as being weak. It's like, no, they hurt me. They did this. They did that. I need to get them. They don't understand that it's not retaliation. Right, right, right. <laughs> Explain that. Mm -hmm. Depends on what you did. Right. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I mean, I mean it's, it's human nature to want justice. Okay. Right? Um, I, I would like to think that this is an area that any father that considers himself a protector, um, just naturally, if something happens to one of my children, something happens to my wife, um, you know, I'm going, I, I, I'm, it's something that I, I have to call the, the trust the group because I'm going all the way in my mind, right? So just as a protector, you you want to make sure that you build uh, a hedge of protection around the people that you love. So I'm, I'm using that as um, an example. As a human, you want justice. Somebody mm -hmm. does something to my wife, something does something to my, one of my, my children. I want to do something back immediately, like almost with no thought, right? Everything's good though at home. Everything. <laughs> but, you are from Detroit. Right, right. You know them Detroit. But, but as we, but as believers, um, we should never demand just justice um, for moral moral failures of others because 
you know, we all fail morally mm -hmm. um, at some point. So you can't demand um, fire to fall on someone's head for the same mistake you made five years ago. Right. You bumped your head. Somebody had to forgive you. You had to forgive yourself. Now, mm -hmm. five years later, somebody else did the same thing. You can't treat that person like they're the worst in the whole in the whole world. Um, so, you know, even even with what we do um, as a ministry, you know, just because we point out sins and different things that we see as watchmen, that doesn't mean that we haven't had to deal with those things right. from a personal level and on all aspects. Right. We're constantly giving our word of testimony for the building of the faith in our brothers and our sisters. But uh, since we want mercy from God, then we have to show mercy to others. And that's Bible. Uh, Matthew 5 and 7 states, blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. So it sounds like God is the type of God who designed this thing to where it's a level playing field when it comes to this stuff. So in order for me to get forgiveness, I have to give it, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, and that just seems very simple. So I, I, after, after I leveled down from my emotions, right? Um, then, you know, I pray that God will give me the heart to forgive. So in turn, I can be forgiven when it's my turn. Mm -hmm. And forgiveness, the, the big thing is forgiveness is, uh, is not weakness, but it's meekness. Yeah. And people get those get that mixed up. Yeah. They think I'm I'm being weak if I forgive. I'm giving in or whatever. No, that's meekness. Yeah. You know, meekness means you you have power. Yeah. You have the power to retaliate. You have the power to get somebody. Jesus, when he was on the cross, one of the thieves told him, said, Man, won't you just won't you just end all of this? Call on legions of and and, and make you know, send the angels out and to get you off the cross. And, right. But Jesus, because he was meek you know, held his peace and yeah. allowed God's process, you know, to be fulfilled. And that that's supreme meekness. That's what I want to be like him because he had all the power in the world, but he had it under control. And that's what meekness means. So uh, true believers that trust God, um, that trust God for vengeance, uh, they, they're able to forgive God I and mean, forgive those that hurt them, mm -hmm. uh, the people that hurt them, if they trust God for the vengeance and you don't take vengeance. And when you trust God for vengeance, you're just trusting God to help that person. Yeah. You're not trusting God to blow their head off. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. oh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to pray for you, brother. I'm going to pray for you. You know, that, I mean, that, <laughs> <laughs> don't pray for me looking like that. Right, right, uh, right. But it's, we, we don't seek for God to get somebody back. Mm -hmm. You know, because that's that's really taking vengeance as well. Right. You yeah. let God be God, handle people the way they need to be handled. And a lot of times, you know, a guy can heal situations that you didn't think he could heal and he can intervene. But you have to realize that you're not weak for forgiving. You're just being meek. Hebrews 10 and 30 says, for we know that uh, him that hath said vengeance belongeth unto me. I will recompense, saith the Lord. And again, the Lord shall judge his people. So let God be the judge. Yeah. Let him be who he is. And you forgive so you can get past things. You know, right. if you don't forgive, you ain't going nowhere. Mm. You know, forgiveness is, I mean, unforgiveness is a bookmark. Right. And it's going to keep you there. Right. And you won't progress. Right. And then you, be, you, you get bitter watching other people progress. You'll even see the assailant or whoever took advantage of you or whatever they did to you. They start progressing. Now the world ain't fair. Right. You know, now, right. oh, Lord, look, yeah. look, look, look at that. See, I'm, and now you Hebrew Israelite, yeah. uh, you grow your hair out, you 5% or something mm -hmm. because you couldn't forgive. Mm -hmm. And it had nothing, nothing to do um, with, with God and his mercy. It had to do with you holding on to something right. and not letting it go. And, and then you become cynical, right? But, the, but this is why the Bible teaches us to. Let that mind be, let that mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus, right? And, and forgive me, I'm paraphrasing it. This is it's a scripture in Peter um, where it states that uh, Jesus' process is one day is like a thousand years, that's a thousand years to one day. And this is a time frame, this is time allotted for us to get it right. This is grace for us to get it right. So somebody may do you wrong, right? It's your choice to cut that person off. It, it's, it's funny because the way we're raised, especially, um, with with this with the whole narrative of false masculinity, you feel like you just you you dead a situation or what what they would call dead a situation where if somebody does something wrong, there's no coming back from that, right? Um, but but as believers, that mindset has to change as we grow and we be and we you know get the counseling of of elders and things of that nature, where you have to allow time for a person to mature and grow as well, just like you were allowed to mature and grow. So it's, again, it's the same never ending ending cycle. You have to allow people that time. You have to. Because mm -hmm. I mean, I want the time. 
I, I may I may mess up. Mm-hmm. I may I may stumble. I may trip. I won't fall. And I know for a fact, you know, daily what my intention is. So because in that being a, being a human being, or you know what I mean, mm-hmm. that something may happen. And if that happens, can you forgive me, Carmina? <laughs> <laughs> well, see, I'm glad God allowed me that time because I prayed for a whole bunch of people' feet to be broke. So God has really <laughs> taken me away from that, and I'm excited <laughs> about that. I can forgive y'all. We're talking about getting over it. Going to take a small break, and we'll be right back. Visit us online at exministries.com. Letting it go, I'm moving ahead, not looking at the past, at the things that are dead. Hi, I'm G. Craig Lewis of EX Ministries, and I want to tell you about a very special project that we are releasing on DVD, a very special series called Let It Go. Many of us uh, struggle with hurt and pain of our past, and a lot of times this can be immobilizing. It can Uh, change our lives and hold us in a certain place. And God wants to take us further. And we struggle so hard with some of these things that it makes it very hard to overcome. And until we really understand what we've been through and really overcome what we've been through, we can't really move forward like God would have us. Whether it's divorce, abuse, or even the death of a parent or a loved one, a lot of times these things can uh, uh, just change our lives forever and even cause us to make very bad choices and decisions. But God wants to heal us from that. He wants to take away the bitterness, the unforgiveness, so that you will no longer be mobilized, so you can move forward. And this particular series, it's a three-part series entitled Letting Go, will help you to overcome all the issues that you've dealt with, really understand what you've been through, and also break free. This is a true roadmap to recovery. So I encourage you to make a donation to EX Ministries. Visit us on the web at exministries.com and order this particular series so that you can finally let it go. It don't matter whether you cry, y'all ain't saying nothing to me. It don't matter whether you hyperventilate, it don't matter if you telling me you done lost everything because once I stop caring, you are in a dangerous place because I'm a giver, I'm forgiving, I'm loving, but as soon as I figure it out that you taking me for granted and don't value what I bring, I will shut all the way down. Now, and it ain't that I'm angry. I don't have an attitude. I'm just finished. To the point that I don't care that I don't care. So we're back with part two and we're talking about getting over it. Part two of what? Part two of getting over it. Okay. <laughs> that was pretty dope. <laughs> I was kind of, so, that was fire. That was fire. In the first half, fire. we talked a lot about forgiveness and really explained about forgiveness and why we need forgiveness and things like that. So after hearing that, somebody still got an issue. Somebody's <laughs> like, I choose not to forgive. She loves this Are stuff. they just leaving room for bitterness to set in? Seriously. I mean, you, you hear everything, every reason why. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they are. Um, see, w- when we choose to hold grudges, we're setting ourselves up to really hurt other people, right? Um, it's just, it's no way to hide unforgiveness. It's going to come out somehow. So what will what happen is it'll start to control your decisions and, and you can, man, you can mess up other people's lives. Um, so let me do that over. It will control other decisions and it will wreck the lives of those we attempt to love and care for, right? So let's look at Ephesians 4 and and 31, it says, let all bitterness, right? Because that's what you asked about. Mm-hmm. Wrath, anger, <laughs> clamor. And that word clamor is interesting. That, that means... Uh, Keeping up a bunch of mess. Being, just being loud, just, uh, just rah, rah for no reason. Um, evil speaking. And then it says, put that away from you with all malice. Malice with all intentions of doing evil. So don't let those things build up in you because it'll lead you to do something um, as I stated, which is harming other people's lives. So the Bible is very clear with how to deal with this um, this, this particular situation, um, or I'm, I'm sure Pastor touched on. I mean, a lot of times it could be a spirit. 
um, that's affecting you, right? Yeah. And, you know, what I like to tell people all the time, you know, it's not going to leave. Unforgiveness, uh, when you choose not to forgive, especially after you get the information and you know you're supposed to, like what you're saying, if when you choose not to, bitterness is already set in. So it's really bitterness is already there and uh, it's already taken root in you. So you're choosing not to forgive because of that. And uh, let me make a separation here, you know, because people think a lot of times when you say forgive, that means you have to always treat a person like they never did it. Right, right. And that's not true. <clears throat> okay. We are to forgive, but there are cases where people do certain things where you would, you, you don't prefer their company. Right. You know, they, they're not going to fit where you're going. They're not going to fit God's plan for you. If they have an envy and issue or a, a jealousy issue or something like that, you know, you can forgive them for doing something to you. But because it's based in a perpetual envying, they're going to do it again. They're going to do something again. Yes. And they're just probably not good for your life. They probably can't either handle who you are, right. who God wants you to be, or mm -hmm. where God has taken you, or just all kinds of things. So right. let's, let's understand, you can forgive, but that doesn't mean that you have to walk with this person. Right. And uh, the best example of that, of course, is, is Paul when uh, he and uh, Barnabas got into it. The mm -hmm. Bible says that it was heated. It said it was a heated disagreement and, and they couldn't continue together. Right. And so a lot of times that, you know, that'll take place. And then another example I like to use for bitterness, um, you know, for people, you don't want bitterness to be birthed in you because you'll end up, you know, uh, trying to cover it up. And that's Simon the Sorcerer. In the book of Acts, it talks about Simon the Sorcerer and how he, he struggled with uh, bitterness uh, so he supposedly had believed and he started following uh, the, uh, the the disciples or the apostles. And and then when they when he saw them, uh, I guess, uh, manifesting the Holy Spirit, he wanted to buy it. And he just reverted back to who he was, which mm -hmm. meant he hadn't really, truly believed. But it was so strange because Peter saw something in him, you know, that was causing him to want to perform for the people. And he right. said it like this in Acts 8 and 23. For I perceive that thou art in the gall of bitterness. So there's some bitterness there. There's something you haven't let go of that's causing you to perform for people, it's, which is affectation, the performing spirit. You're doing something to be seen as something that you're not yeah. at because you're covering up something. And in this case, it was bitterness. So that's what bitterness will do. So when you choose not to forgive, man, your life could go on a whole different course. And then you stand before God and God is like, man, I wanted you over here. And you ended up all the way over there because you it. wouldn't forgive. You wouldn't let it go. And that began to rule your life and direct you. And who you thought was God, it wasn't really me. Right. You know, you were just trying to over you. You were being chased by uh, uh, those negative um, things that happened to you. Right. So is holding a grudge against someone, is that really detrimental to your health? People don't understand when you're keeping all that bottled up inside. Doesn't it impact us? I mean, do we even realize the effects that bitterness takes on our physical bodies? Do we right. think about that? Have you, do you, do you recall ever being around a bitter person before? Mm -hmm, like they, 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 bitter people weigh you down. They, they truly do exhaust you because they have a cynical approach towards everything in most cases. So there, you can't pull a light out of any situation. Right. They're going to always redirect it to whatever they're dealing with eternally or whatever void they have. They're going to always redirect it to that. So what I'm saying is, just imagine what they're doing to themselves physically and mentally. So if it's causing people around them to feel that way. So we, we, <laughs> we've dealt with entertainers and, 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 and uh, actors and actresses all of these years, right? Mm -hmm. At nighttime, the reason why they excel at their jobs, the reason why they're the best performers in the world, the reason why they can morph into a totally different person, sometimes these people change hair colors and, and, and all of that, right? Mm -hmm. The reason why they're able to do that is because of that bitterness or because of the unforgiveness that they're harboring. Mm -hmm. They're escaping their own reality because they're not dealing with it. You understand what I'm saying? So Proverbs 4 and 23 says, keep thy heart with all diligence. That's something that you have to pay attention to. You, if the issues of life are in the heart, which is the other half of that scripture, for out of, the, for out of it are the issues of life. So keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. If that's what's in the coming out of the, the heart, the issues of life. If the Bible labels the heart as what 
the, the deceitful, increasingly wicked, right? If, if the Bible says you have to keep, keep it with diligence. This is something that we have to work on every single day. Small testimony of mine, right? For whatever the circumstance, I didn't grow up with my father in the house. By the grace of God, it was reconciled. I love him to life right now. He calls me all the time. He's constantly saying how, how, how proud of, uh, of, of me he is. But for a moment there, I, I thought I had the feeling of hate towards him because of what I felt like was happening. After conversation, after prayer, after clarity, after maturity, I, there was no bitterness left. There was no grudge left. There was just nothing but forgiveness on both ends. And after, after I come of age, there's things that I did on my end that were disrespectful that he uh, gave me forgiveness for. You understand what I'm saying? So it works again on, on both ends. Dealing with your heart is a key key component of this, which is what the Bible just stated. Yeah, and holding on to a grudge, I always say, is holding on to something. That'll make you sick, holding on to something. I mean, everything, you know, your body's not supposed to hold on to stuff. You weren't built for that. And so holding on to a grudge, and because it's negative, it's going to definitely affect your emotional and mental uh, mental state. A lot of people are dealing with pain and different things that have manifested as disease and disorders in their bodies because mm -hmm. of unforgiveness. A lot of these things, that, a lot of times you go to the doctor, the doctor can't find anything. They just make up something because they're in the business of you being sick. Right. So they're going to find something or they're going to say it's this or that. And it's so weird. You know, I just recently learned, and I don't know if this is going to be era man four, but I just recently learned that a lot of the diagnosis that we get from the doctors, they show issues in your blood that, or, you know, that resemble a, a sickness, but it might not be that sickness. It may just be registering as that sickness because right. that's the way emotional issues register. Yep. And so a lot of people are getting diagnosed with things. They don't really have it. But what they have is emotional and there's no other way for it to show up other than that way on a test. They're being medicated for it and everything. And man, all they have to do is forgive. A simple prayer to God of forgiveness. And people say, well, I, I forgave, I forgave. No, you need to ask God, have you forgiven? See, what? what, what? <laughs> what? Talk about it. I mean, really? That, yeah. That, that, that's the thing. Yeah. You, did you ask God, have you forgiven? I can tell by the way you said it. I already forgave that, <laughs> that, that you know. Yeah. Yeah. I, like, I mean, that's and, bitter and, right there. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. You just ma you manifesting talking about forgiveness. I forgive him. Oh. Right. Like, dude, you, 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 I think a little more is still left in there. <laughs> still left in there. <laughs> but yeah. you need to ask God. Say, God, I mean, have I, have I really forgiven this person? Mm -hmm. And you know you haven't forgiven them if you're always thinking about it. Right. Yeah. And every time they come around, you just get sick. Right. Or you running in another room when they come over. You know, that's just, you haven't really forgiven it. If you're still talking about it, you ain't forgiven them. So ask God, and, and, and because you don't want to get sick behind that. Uh, Ephesians 4 and 32 says, and be ye kind one to another. But this next word is the word I wanted to deal with, tenderhearted. It, tenderhearted, a person with unforgiveness, their heart is, is stony. Right. You know, it's rocky. Right. And it has to be broken up for the power of God to even reside in there. And so if you're dealing with unforgiveness, then you are not tender hearted. But the Bible commands us and says, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven yeah. you. So hearing what we've heard today, somebody's listening and they're like, you know what? OK, I want to get past this. I want to I want to forgive. So. Does that mean they need to go confront people that hurt them and demand an apology? You know, is that going to set them free from the pain that they cause? Well, my sister Carmina, um, as a person who doesn't mind confrontation, um, I, I will, I'll be the first to tell you that it doesn't change everything. It's definitely more self-fulfilling than it is um, an antidote to cure that situation. So, no, confronting people will not change anything. Um, a lot of times people don't even know how badly they hurt you. But that's why I got to check them so they know. Check right. them. And then she put her fist up. See, Carmina's taking this person. Yes, these are questions. <laughs> but see, but either way, listen, but either way, we, we must forgive them from our heart without confrontation or demanding payback. Do you, didn't God just say the only way he would forgive us is if yeah. 
So if we're going to demand, if we're going to demand payback, what's the payback for our sin? Because every single person on this earth has De- sin. Deserves to die. And I said earth. I know what I said. <laughs> is, now, is that Death. the flat one? Well, Earth would Earth? be the with the F. That's the one. It F got a couple. Flat. It got a couple corners, <laughs> <laughs> right? Um, so Second Corinthians two and seven says it like this: So that con- con- contrary wise, uh, or on the contrary, ye ought rather to forgive him and comfort him, and forgive that person. At least perhaps such a one should be swallowed up with over with over much sorrow. So it affects that person. You. It, it just. It's an, again, it's a never ending cycle of everybody is going to lose with the unforgiveness. Everybody wins with forgiveness. So if you can just remove your selfishness in that moment. Right. But wait a minute. And, you know, Pastor, people always go to the extreme. They always use something like molestation or rape. The, the things that as a human being we deem unforgivable. The things we don't want to take the time and walk out and, and reach upon the forgiveness. They always name those things, but forgiveness is forgiveness. It, it's not attached. There is no contingency to forgiveness. You have to forgive. The different times I've seen news clippings or, or um, uh, news reports where a mother or a father will do an interview or they're, they're showing them in a the courtroom and they have to say, oh, yes, this person took my child's life, but I forgive them. And it might not even necessarily be fully forgive, full forgiveness at that moment. They just they don't want to continue that narrative for the people that's witness to this situation that's going on. Mm-hmm. That's the first step to forgive. So, you know, no, we, we, we have to forgive. So all parties involved um, can move on with their lives. Yeah. And, yeah. and a lot of times people are really waiting on uh, apologies, you know, and they, they can't move forward because they are waiting on the person to come mm-hmm. and they ought to come to me. They right. feel entitled to an apology. Right. That's why I can check them. <laughs> We mm. go okay, I'm sorry. Go ahead. But, but, hey, <laughs> maybe we need to have a prayer of deliverance right now for coming. For you. But L- lift your hands. No, I'm just lift, the, <laughs> lift those hands. Right those. Now. But a lot of times people want apologies. They <laughs> want you to come to them. So, I mean, their whole life is on hold. Yeah. Waiting on that moment when you will come and say, I'm sorry. You know, and that's not necessarily the way it's going to play out. And a lot of times, you know, We just have to forgive regardless of whether we even see that person again, whether we get to that person. Sometimes it may be advantageous for us not to ever see them again and just let it go and repent, uh, uh, repent, you know, because true forgiveness is birthed in the heart. It's not birthed in a meeting Mm -hmm. or calling a parlay or just, you know, hooking up so we can discuss it and having a powwow. And man, we're going to go in a room and we're not coming out until we hash this thing out and watch it. You know, no, that's not true forgiveness. True forgiveness is birthed in the heart of the person that wants to let it go. And uh, the best example of that is Christ. Uh, Christ did not require his accusers that tormented him to repent, uh, repent to him personally, but rather he forgave them in his heart. And Luke 23 and 34 says, then said Jesus, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. And they parted, you know, his raiment. So they kept doing what they were doing Mm -hmm. and Christ was forgiving them, letting them off the hook. And that's our example. So whether a person is there, we shouldn't be looking for a meeting with somebody. We shouldn't be looking for a confrontation. We should be able to forgive them. Now, if we see them, then that's going to be the real test. Mm -hmm. You know, I remember (laughs) I'm going to turn this way. (laughs) But I I remember one time and this was a big, big deal. I had this preacher who, you know, had come into my life and he wanted to be, you know, I lost my father. And so he wanted to be like a father figure and this kind of thing. So he kind of pulled me in and, you know, he began to really get into EX ministries and just call me all the time. You're doing okay, checking on me, all these things. And then, you know, a a couple of years later, after all of that, I found out he was working in cahoots with another pastor that wanted to stop me. And so he was really setting me up to just, you know, shut, shut it down Mm -hmm. or get gain control of it. So I wouldn't talk about hit the other pastor that was, you Mm -hmm. know, whose platform he was coveting. And man, that hurt me, man. I found out and it was God that revealed it to a friend of mine. And then when I checked it, it was true. And uh, that hurt me. That severely hurt me. Like I was scarred. I mean, I was just, you know, but uh, I I just moved on and I asked God, Lord, uh, if there's any parts of that in me, take it out. 
and I let God nurse me through that hurt and that pain, you know. And uh, man, 10, 15 years later, me and my wife on a plane and he, he, he gets on the plane. Well, we saw him in the lobby waiting to get on the plane and finally he boarded the plane and I'm sitting back there and I'm looking at him and, you know, I just started thinking, if I if I really forgiven him, you know, because sometimes you got to ask yourself yeah. that. And so I got up to go to the restroom, and uh, when I go was going, I walked past him, and he tapped me on the shoulder, and he said, "You know, good to see you, G. Craig." And I said, "Yeah, it's good to see you." And then I came back to my seat after I, you know, said that, and I uh, sat next to my wife and just. Broke down crying because y'all know I'm a big crybaby. <laughs> but I, I just started crying. And uh, I told my wife, I said, I'm crying because I know I have forgiven him. Yeah. And that's a big deal for me because yeah. the, the worst thing in the world you can be is a hurt preacher. Yeah. If you're a scarred preacher. Talk about it. All your messages go off the road. You can't stay on God's path. You're going to continually veer. And, and go off, and then you're going to take a bunch of people with you every time. So I want to always make sure I'm not carrying stuff, not carrying her. Now, I'm human, so I'm going to feel it. Of course. But I want to make sure I'm not carrying it so it don't cause me to, you know, like them YouTube videos where the preacher going off on his congregation. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to cause me to get up and clamor. Yeah. There, there you go. <laughs> Clamoring on Sunday morning and just going off and making people stand up, calling them out and <laughs> lining them up and talking their business uh, in the mind. You know, the old bitter uh, preachers. I, so I thank God for that growth. But I, I say that to say it was God who helped me through the through the forgiveness, and because I trusted him with it, I wasn't trying to be proud about it or nothing. I was just like, God, make sure it's not in me so that I can move forward and be, you know, free and be what you want me to be. That's Amen. good. That's good. Hashtag don't be a hurt preacher. Yep. So I'm glad you shared that because that leads me to my next question. <clears throat> so how can we use our past hurt and pain as motivation to do better and treat others better? Um, you know, seeing yourself, you know, seeing ourselves is always the best way to let people off the hook. As I alluded to earlier when I was talking about um, the reconciliation of me and my father's relationship. You know, this this happened around about the time um, that I was getting married. Um, I was about 21 and I was in prayer about it. And God was like, listen, you, you, you got to get this right with your father. So I literally called him. I repented to him on the phone. I'm sorry for whatever part I played in it. Dad, forgive me, blah, blah, blah. I drove to his house. He was sitting in his backyard. And to this day, we laugh about it because his disposition was, you know, he was kind of like in defense because we had attempted to do these things a, a couple a couple different times. But I, was, I didn't have help to help me deal with it or process mm -hmm. it. So each time we would take steps, we would take steps backwards. But in this, in this particular scenario, situation, I, um, I, it was real. And so we hugged, we talked it out, and it's been nothing but up since. Um, and that's, you know, oh, almost 15, 16 years ago, um, he, he, he helped me pick my wife. Like, my father was actually instrumental in that. He loves my wife dearly. That entire process. So imagine forgiveness doesn't take place. I don't get that counsel from my father. I almost mess up, maybe. You know what I mean? You, not, you not, wouldn't be right here either. Right. I probably, you are absolutely correct. <laughs> you, I, you absolutely correct. So, you know, we have to see ourselves. I seen myself. So I didn't call him because I, I didn't, I, I stopped waiting on his apology. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, so when we realize our own faults and stop trying to rank things, right? Well, dad, you didn't pick me up for school for five years. <laughs> well, you didn't call me for Father's Day for 10 years. Like it, it was none of that. I mean, I, this is my father. He's still a, 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 a pretty big man. So I wouldn't necessarily have said that to him. <laughs> but the, the point is there was no ranking. There was no back and forth about who did what the longest or the shortest. Um, I just had to realize, again, my faults, right? So we will see how badly we all need a savior and, and forgiveness because of that. So this will help us treat others better. So when you're in a situation where somebody may have done something wrong, and, and instead of just making it so intentional from their end, just choose to forgive and move on. And that could be a, a God ordained relationship that'll help you in the future. Um, or it could be a situation where forgiveness is taking place and then you just move on. So it's just whatever scenario plays out according to God's will is God's will. But you have to look at yourself first. You have to.
And, and I want you to talk a little bit, Pastor, as you jump in about the ranking. Because that's that's the worst thing we see. Mm-hmm. Well, I didn't sin as bad as you sinned, or I didn't do this as bad as you did. And we have this crazy scale that we hold ourselves up to. Talk about that. Is there a greater sin? Or- well, you know, that, and, and some sins are worse to worse than others because of co- the consequences of them. True. But True. as far as how we view it, we view it all as sin. Mm-hmm. And as the way God views it, he views it all as sin. Now, it may affect you worse in your human walk. Right. Because, you know, like, you know, I totally disagree with T.D. Jakes when he says homosexuality is just like going off on some uh, a teller at the uh, bank. Bank. Why? I, I, I totally disagree I with mean, that as well. It's I absolutely give wrong. Give me. I mean, <laughs> I'm not the same. Teller. I mean, a teller at the bank. <laughs> bro, give me that all day. Yeah. Uh, you know, because that yeah. other thing is, 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 you know. Yeah. It's a so little deeper. I, so there's a difference. And then one of them is a sin against your own body, according to the Bible. But when it comes to forgiveness, we got to forgive it all. Yes, so we can't rank it like, well, you did this to me. Because when you hold someone to a higher, more, uh, that high of a moral standard uh, as far as justice, you're holding yourself to that too. There is. He said, judge not that ye shall not be judged. Mm-hmm. Because the same way you judge right. is the way you're going to be judged. Right. And so we have to be careful because... You know, uh, if we try to rank things, I mean, who's to say? I mean, well, here's the thing: we're ranking things based on our own scale, which right. we going yeah, we go, we gonna give ourselves a, 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 you know, an A on the test. Yeah, okay. we, we we judging on a curve, so there's no way we can rank it. It's all sin, and the big thing about forgiveness is you just have to do it to be a Christian. Right. So <laughs> go worship something else. You know, worship a donkey, to worship the head of letters, like rerun, whatever you go do, go go <laughs> worship something else. But if you're going to worship the true and living God, right. to even get in his presence, you have to forgive. Yes. Right? Yes, sir. And yes, I'm, I'm going to close this out with this right here. As Christians, our goal should always be to forgive and let people off the hook without any payback or revenge. Let them off the let me, which cameras? Let them off the hook. Just let them off the hook. You be the one. Don't wait for them. Don't wait for a letter. Don't wait for an email. Don't wait. You be the one. Say, God, help me let this person off the hook. Show me what's in me that's keeping me from letting this go. We have to do that. This makes us more like Christ and will help us be trustworthy in his sight. Now, listen, how can God tr- truly trust a person that harbors unforgiveness and the sins of others? You know, when you holding on to someone's sin, you're a sin harborer. Yep. <laughs> this person is motivated by a negative and not a positive. This means that they are running from hurt and pain, which causes them to lead others astray. Hurting people follow those that harbor hurt. It's like the old saying, misery loves company. A person motivated by negativity will never find the help they need. But a person, uh, when a person is motivated by a positive thing, like being in Christ or being Christ-like and truly forgiving those that hurt them, God can trust them with manifold blessings. A lot of times people, why are they getting blessed? That seem like God is blessing them. Whatever. Well, they let it go. They let it go. And God trusts them. Mm-hmm. He don't trust you if you can't let something go. Because you're in error of the basic step that it takes to even be saved. God will honor their obedience to forgive and let go by bringing hurting people their way to follow their example. So you got hurting people that's following a hurt preacher or hurt person. They all going to fall in the ditch, according to the word. But then you have the person who was able to let it go. People come to them to find out how they themselves can let it go. Colossians 3 and 12 says, put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, vows of mercies, kindness. Oh, listen to this. Humbleness in mind. That's how you end up making the phone call. Yeah. Because you humbled yourself in your mind and said, you know what? If I don't do this or like I said in the daily word, nothing is nothing changes. If nothing, nothing changes. <laughs> so humbleness of mind, meekness, long suffering. 
3 and 13 says, forbearing one another, which means putting up with one another. Yeah. Putting up with people. Putting up with they're where you used to be. So give them time to grow. Putting up with one another. And forgiving one another. If any man have quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do. Thank you.